TNTM The Show presents Talking Nerdy May Edition with your host, Pablo Gunner, the ambassador. And we are here to talk nerdy to you about Doctor Who. If you're new here, for our grade scale, for most of our stuff, because most stuff is streaming, it's going to be a must-see, must-stream. Then it's just going to be check it out as the mid-grade, and then the low-grade is going to be pass. Now, if you can't stream it, then it's going to be probably a buy, and then rent, if there's a rent or some form of that, since there's, we don't really, you know, you could try it, I guess, you know, like, which is pretty much Game Pass type services, right? Or Gamefly. Yeah, 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 you could do that. All righty. Let's move on. Doctor Who. Have you been watching it? Yeah, unfortunately. What? Okay, go ahead. I just... It doesn't feel like Doctor Who anymore. Okay. It just feels like some random sci-fi show. It just... Uh, it doesn't feel... Like, I was hoping with Russell T. Davies returning, we could get, like, closer to the older episodes with, like, Eccleston and Tennant. But it just doesn't really feel that way. And it just... If I'm having to check my watch while I'm watching a show, that's usually when I have to say it's probably a pass. Okay. Because if I'm not interested in it, it doesn't work for me. I felt like a lot of times they were talking instead of showing. And talking is never as good. Because... The example I would like to use is Doctor Strange versus Iron Man. The original Doctor Strange movie, all they kept saying is, he's conceited, he's conceited, he's conceited. He's arrogant. He's arrogant, but wouldn't show it. Iron Man, he was an arrogant asshole, <laughs> but do they have to, did they really mention it? No, they no. didn't have to because the filmography was good enough to go, this is who he is. And they had particular scenes on purpose to really show it like the whole fact that he got with the reporter sleep with her just so he could just like knock her off the bed as a joke <laughs> told you everything you needed to know about this guy yeah and was a success it's just a lot of a lot of lazy writing out there where instead of showing, it's telling. Okay. And I'm more of a showing fan because it doesn't feel as real if you're having to be keep getting told what's going on instead of showing. Okay. So I, I don't know what you're referring to exactly because I watched... So the first episode is literally Space Babies, which I thought was hilarious and adorable and yet it was still kind of a little scary because there was that boogeyman <laughs> it was a little it was a little tongue in cheek for sure for for that and but the kiddos enjoyed it i enjoyed it and the kiddos enjoyed it and it was a nice intro to this new doctor a re-intro to this new doctor um so how did you feel about that episode didn't really care for it much i i didn't really like the visuals that much and the, the visuals were pretty jarring to look at, so it really made it harder to watch. Yeah, I just give the whole series so far, the whole new series, a pass. I was worried you were going to say that. But I'm not surprised, just based off of what you've said. I mean, like I said, to me it's always been cheesy, it's always been campy, and it's always just been some weird sci-fi-ish show. Sci more like sci-fantasy, but... Second episode I thought was absolutely phenomenal and brilliant, which was Boom, written by Stephen Moffat. And that one was phenomenal. To me, I'm like, I'm going to remember that for a long, long time. The, the acting in that blew me away. I was so impressed with that. It, it was just, it was, and it was so intense. The stakes were so high. It, it, that one was just so impressive. Are you talking about the landmine one? The landmine, yeah. That's the third episode. Oh, okay then. Yeah, the second one was the drag queen one. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so that one was okay. And that one was very different from the second one, obviously. Yeah, the only the only positive thing I really have to say about that one was the suit he was wearing was pretty sweet. Yeah. 
I mean, I like the era. I like, you know, obviously, but that music, the music wasn't really there. The musical number was just kind of like random. Uh, so a lot of that episode actually is kind of forgettable, right? I just I I literally skipped over it. Even the way they explained why the villain was doing the thing was just like a was a cop out on how to do it. It's like, oh, this is the toy maker's kid. That was it. Well, I think that's what happening. What's happening in this season is you're gonna feel the reverberations. They're slowly setting up these toy makers children or creations or whatever that are going to stand in his way like even the next episode the the i think the fourth episode i think that has to do that might have to do with the toy maker but i don't know which was this one did more of showing what ruby is about right like you saw how she really deserves to be with the doctor because she defeated this thing uh, this 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 evil person like that was so well done mind you it's not a perfect episode and there was a lot of confusion because like the lady didn't disappear after she did that and there's but they did mention like timelines and magic so i think this is all tied in and i'm hoping that it explains more and if it doesn't i'm fine that it doesn't explain more i still think it's a it's a decent solid episode all on its own or or combined with other ones because it just it it does so good at at introducing the companion and like I said timelines and, and the whole timey wimey confusingness of it which is just crazy so i'm interested to see more because of how confusing this was but i can understand also at the same time why people don't like it or wouldn't like it as well as any of the other episodes i'm not saying like you're not a real doctor who fan but to me, this is the randomness of these Doctor Who episodes is the randomness of Doctor Who. Like, so I, I've appreciated it for what it is, um, but I also realize that it's not perfect and it has its faults. I, I'm not overlooking them. I'm just taking the good over the bad because I think there is more good than bad um, for the most part. So and People aren't really liking it too because uh, viewership-wise... It's the worst viewership it's ever had Okay. as a series. And that includes, like, before when it was canceled. This is lower than that. Uh, guys, guys, uh, not to be a naysayer or anything, but the only customer we've had is that weird guy who keeps paying Justin to wash his truck. That's it, boy. Get in there nice and deep, like. Okay. So we'll, we'll see if what they want to do. Well, I mean, you're introducing a lot. I mean, I, I think it was bad before when people were pretty upset that the Doctor was female. And I'm sure pretty uh, people, certain people are upset that now the Doctor's black, you know? And so there are those people you're going to lose along the way. And for them, I say, literally, you can just die off. Like, that's as far as I'm concerned. Like... You know, I, I'm good without those people. We don't need those people, period, whatsoever. But I'm enjoying it. I will not say that it's an absolute must-see, but I do think it's worth checking out. Yeah, me, it's a pass. Thank you for watching checking this out. Like, comment, subscribe. Thank you for watching. We appreciate you. Uh, check out our merch. I'm wearing the Doctor Who uh, lettering with the Doctor Who TARDIS. We have other Doctor Who stuff. Um, this is actually was a prototype, so I've actually dragged it down so it's it's not so high up. So now the lettering is like more like right here, and then the the TARDIS is going to be right here. But um, and then I'm wearing rocking my Asul Beetle all print, um, not leggings. What do they call them? Joggers. Uh, which I, the all print is always the w way to go. I, they're probably not on the site though because we only have a hundred items. But if you want it, we can hook you up. We can get them for you. And you're sporting uh, the periodically nerdy shirt, which is just it's nerdy periodically. Yeah. Obviously, it's hilarious and brilliant, which is so fitting for the ambassador. <laughs> so, yeah, you know what? Let's do some shout outs, too. I got some shout outs for the peeps for that. Always at the top of the list. We have Atticus Atticus. Uh, and then we have um, which is he's a YouTuber. 
and he's just raw and 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 real and he's a teacher out in Vietnam and but he also just does slice of life stuff that's that's really interesting really great you know what it's like to have relationships with friends you know people of the um r romantic relationships even people of the opposite gender of your own or whatever and uh and and it's so cool I love just seeing it because it like the land is just beautiful like it's it's so cool to see uh MK Jekyll and Hyde is another one that is great uh they do comics like online comics and they're great and every it seems like every post they make is so inspirational so i love their stuff uh film rage those guys are hilarious they cover all films doesn't matter they will cover all of them because they like us will waste their time so you don't have to and uh mary may media which kind of sounds like what it is which is anime media um and a little americana i guess i don't know um so yeah, and then uh, Superpower List, those guys are awesome, hardcore comic book nerds, talking nerdy to me. Stay nerdy, planet Earth.